Gary Hall Sr. here in beautiful Isla Morada with the race club and one of our best swimmers ever, George Bovell. George was a graduate of Auburn University and uh, swims for Trinidad and Tobago. Has swum in three Olympics, won a bronze medal in 2004 in the 200 IM, and then became a freestyler and is focused on the 50 and the 100 freestyle. And uh, George, coming up, this will be your fourth Olympics. That's something to be pretty proud of, I think. Makes me sound really old, doesn't it? <laughs> but well, I started young. My first was in 2000 when I was just 17, and it was just for the experience, really. And, uh, and uh, because of that, I think I came back in 2004, and I knew the ropes, and uh, was able just to stay a lot more focused on what I had to do and didn't go to the opening ceremonies, didn't go there on a holiday. I was there on business, and uh, walked away with a bronze medal in the tournament I am. You've had some great swims. Uh, you, you swam 21-7, I think, in, in uh, the Olympics in, in uh, Beijing. And then the following year went 21-2 with the full body suit. And uh, you've had moments where you put in just amazing, amazing performances. Uh, this is kind of an, an Olympics, but it's less pressure, isn't it, in a way for you? I mean. I remember back in my third Olympics and I felt like anything was frosting on the cake, you know, and, and, uh, and yet you're probably in the best physical shape of your life. You're bigger, you're stronger than you, you were when you trained with us in 2008. Actually, uh, yeah, like you said, the 21-2, uh, every now and then I get a glimpse of what's possible. It really keeps me going. And I was getting ready to retire in 2009. And my back was against the wall. It was do or die. And uh, I actually, my suit ripped in my semifinal. And I was naked in front of everybody, and I remember Colin Jones held up a towel for me to change behind, and Dewey and uh, David Dunford refused to go out and swim the semifinal without me. So I was able to get enough time to put a laser on, and I came out. And in that World Championships, the laser was outclassed by the Jacob suit. And I came into the semifinal and uh, ended up sixth in, my in the semifinal, and I thought that was it. I thought that that was the end of my swimming career. I was done. What a good run, but uh, I was actually disappointed to go out like that. But then the second semifinal swam, and I ended up being tied for eighth place. So I had to, a second chance, really, in my whole swimming career, and I came out for the semifinal, and I, I lit it up. I went 21.2, and it's the fourth fastest performance in history. And because of that swim, I'm uh, still in the sport today. And I'm coming in now to the Olympics, and uh, I was in the finals of the World Championships in Shanghai last summer, so I'm still a contender, and uh, there's a lot of room for improvement. But this year is different. In the beginning of the year, right after the World Champs, I had a terrible car accident with a dump truck, and I had a bruise on my brain for seven weeks. I could do no exercise, because if I got my heart rate and my blood pressure up, I really risked having a stroke. Yeah. So I started from scratch and uh, linked back up with Mike Bottom. I went to Michigan and I think because of the bad start to the year, every time I approach a race, I see it. I don't feel the self-imposed pressure I felt before. I see it as an opportunity for greatness instead of uh, a chance for failure. I saw the pictures of the crash after uh, he got hit by the stump truck. And I'm telling you, it puts a whole new perspective on your life when, when you go through that. And, you know, I know you had a serious injury, but thank God you weren't hurt more than you were. Um, but it does change your outlook. Yeah, it puts it in perspective that you do it because it's a beautiful thing and, and you can. Yeah. Well, you're going to have uh, two events, I understand. You're going to focus on both the 50 and you're going to swim the 100 as well? And yes. Uh, I, had, I don't consider myself a competitor in the 100 in the Olympics. Um, I'm more doing it to help the last 15 meters of my 50 freestyle so I can maintain my rates, mm -hmm. my uh, high level of energy output, so I can finish the race really strong. Mm -hmm. And it's also good in a really high pressure environment like the Olympics to have you know, of course, from your experiences, but to have that first race, to just get in and break the ice, so to speak. So you come out of the first race and you think that wasn't so bad. You know, what's the worst that can happen? I'm still going to be here, you know, life goes on. And you can go into your second race with a much uh, fresher, I would use that word to describe it, outlook. I think it's a smart move and, you know, it's, it's good to put your, sec your best race second, not first. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's, it may not be a widely known fact, but 
among the elite swimmers of the world, George has the unofficial title of the greatest spear fisherman among competitive swimmers. And I think you probably would be hard pressed to find any. I've, I've been spear fishing with him. There's, I don't think any competitive swimmer who can who can match what he does underwater. And if you're a fish on the day he decides to go spear fishing, you better go somewhere else. He's he's a killer underwater. But uh, now you're sponsored by Maris, which is uh, yeah. out of Italy, a, a diving company. Maris, uh, yeah, free diving and head swimming. And uh, there's a lot we can learn from the sport of free diving that we can yeah. adapt to, to swimming. You know, because in the end of a race, our cells are in an environment where there's no oxygen. Where and through free diving, we can teach our body to work better with higher levels of waste products in our cells, like metabolic waste and carbon dioxide. And uh, I, I know for sure I can feel the difference. My free diving definitely helps my 50 freestyle. Not to mention, it's a great leg workout too. Yeah, these it's big fins. You get, you get a lot of kicking in. And uh, we're going to find out tomorrow, by the way. We're going out on the boat. And we're going to see how good a, a diver George still is. I know that before he was pretty amazing, and I've seen his videos underwater. I've been, diving. my best dive that I've actually caught a fish at is 108 feet. Wow. And I've been a student of it, and I've had a guy I would say is my mentor. His name is Richard Parkinson, and over the last year and a half, I've learned a lot, and uh, I felt very safe doing it because he was looking out for me. So I was able to push the limits a little bit. It's the real art to it, just like anything else, and George has really mastered it. So George, it's great to see you, and uh, we're going to be pulling for you. You're kind of an underdog now, and it's, it feels good to be in that position, but I think that I have a feeling looking at you stronger than I've ever seen you before. You look like you're ready, and I, I expect great things from you this year. Thank you very much, Gary. Good to see you. It's good to be here. George Bobel.